Welcome to the Daily Race. Uh, thanks so much for joining me here today. We are in the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy and uh, this letter that Paul wrote Timothy instructing him, well, just coaching him on, on how to lead uh, the church. And along with him, by uh, the, the process of how the Holy Spirit inspired this word to be uh, preserved, to be uh, kept, to be passed along to other churches, uh, many leaders, men and women throughout history. Uh, this gives instructions on how to how to lead well, how to what it looks like to disciple people, which means to help them grow in their faith. So, <clears throat> sorry there. Uh, so today we're going to look at at a passage here where he talks about the law and he talks about the goal of what they're trying to do. Because the issue that they're they're dealing with are people that just want to study the the word, study the scriptures for the sake of studying studying the scriptures to become experts in the material. And uh, experts in the material is not a disciple. A disciple is, is knowledgeable, knows the, the material, knows the word, but puts it into practice. And not just puts it into practice, the fruit of that begins to bear in their lives. There, there's change, there's movement forward. Um, this is not an academic, to, to follow Jesus is not an academic pursuit, it's a heart pursuit. Um, that's what he's driving here today. So, so let me read here in, in verse 5. It says this, The purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. So filled with love. Love is the goal. <laughs> that Love is uh, reflected in our attitudes and actions. What did, what did Jesus say? He said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets are fulfilled with these two commands, loving God, loving others. So this isn't just something that, that Paul made up. This is going back to the words of Jesus. So the point is, the point of all this instruction is that we would be filled with love. And this love comes from a pure heart, which means uh, that we're, our, our hearts are, we're not just doing the right thing. We're doing the right thing for the right reason. Remember Jesus said the law, and when he's going through the law, he says, hey, you've heard it said, you shall not murder. But I say, do not say you hate someone, <laughs> because by hating someone, you have committed murder in your heart. The law says, do not commit adultery. But I say, if you have lusted after someone, you've committed adultery in your heart. So this is a not just technically keeping rules, this is the heart that reflects those rules. A clear conscience means that you're being consistent in this and genuine faith, trusting in God. That genuine faith is that we can't solve our sin problems by just doing good things, that we trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Verse six, but some people have missed this whole point. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they're talking about, even though they speak so confidently. We know that the law is good when used correctly. For the law was not intended for people who do what is right. It's for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred to defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother or commit other murders. Here's what he's saying. He said, the law, the law is for people who break the law, to show them what's wrong, uh, to provide the boundaries, to let them know that they need, that they're in the wrong and they need to do what is right. But what Paul is pointing them to is the teachings of Jesus. What you're supposed to, not just what you're not supposed to do, what you're supposed to do. And it's kind of like this. It's the difference, if we think about the law, that the law is like someone that's sick having medicine. It's having medicine. It's, hey, you, you have this illness, you have this sickness, so you need to take this, this prescribed medication. And this medication is gonna solve the problem that you have. But what Paul is talking about here, what he's talking about the, the, the doctrine of Jesus, the way that we live, it's not taking medicine for the bad things we're done. It's like health giving food. The way of Jesus is the food that nourishes, that keeps us healthy. To follow Jesus means that we're not going to get sick. We're, we're not going to fall into sin. If we keep our eyes focused on loving God and loving others, then we're not going to find ourselves struggling with murder and adultery and lying. Uh, we're not going to fall into those areas if we keep our eyes focused on what is right. 
we're focused on the application of what we're supposed to do instead of always focused on what we're not supposed to do, which is what the law. The law is important. The law is necessary. Those boundaries are, are important. But we don't just focus on the laws. We focus on what we're supposed to do. And that's what he's instructing Timothy here to do. Keep your eyes focused on helping people that all their believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart. And then it goes, uh, goes here and, and tells him, it causes Paul to remember, I, think I, I used to be there. I, I used to be focused on the law. I was an expert in the law, but that didn't save me. That, that isn't what made me right. In fact, it, it led me to hypocrisy. It led me to murder. It, it led me to all of these types of things that I was so zealous for keeping the law that my heart wasn't right and I was missing what Jesus was doing. That this is all about the fact that Jesus came down to fulfill the law. That we're to follow Jesus. We're to put him first. We're to honor him in every area of our lives. Love God. Love others. That is the law of Christ. So let's finish up here this first chapter in verse 18. It says this, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their consciousness. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Himaeus and Alexander are two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might learn not to blaspheme God. Pretty serious uh, warning there. That, hey, <laughs> stick to the faith. Stick to the faith. Jesus alone for the forgiveness of your sins. The law is not the answer. You can't out good your bad. Follow Jesus, trust him for eternal life, and teach people to love God and love others. All right, we're going to pause right there for today. We're at the end of chapter one tomorrow. We're going to pick up in chapter two, but let's start our day and pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much just for the fact that you love us so much. And God, we want to know your word. We want to understand what the scriptures say, your love letter to us, your, uh, these amazing writings written over 1,500 years by, by dozens of, of authors, inspired by the Holy Spirit to help us live the life that you've called us to live. God, as we spend our days with you, starting in your word, God, help it never to just be a mental exercise. Help it never to be academic, but God, application-oriented. God, we want to, to follow you better. May it always lead towards movement. May it always lead towards life change, God. We want you to transform us through your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.